Welcome to the Events Editor Tutorial Part 1. So the first screen you're going to see is the Modules Manager. You need to create a new module, give it a name that is at least three characters long. And you can have as many modules as you like, you can delete them, you can rename them. And this is where your events live. So load the selected module. This takes you to the events screen. Press the green new button to create a new event. Select it and rename it with the feather icon. We'll name this one village as we'll be practicing with a village event. You can also clone entire events and you can delete them. And remember to save your work as often as you can. So now we're into the uh, proper events building screen and we've got the start adventure window. So you can set the difficulty of your event. This will determine when your event will start popping out in the world, depending on the difficulty level of your game. We've got the four event types. So the interrupt type disrupts movement of an expedition so it can occur at any time while you're moving. The generic type is a global event drawn every turn. The expedition type is for your exploring parties. And the village type it happens in the village and that's the one we're going to make. So you can assign an image to your event from our own database or you can find your own images and add them following the instructions. To start adding event faces, right click your mouse button and a menu will pop up. So we've got the adventure phase, which is your basic building block where the text goes, the challenge phase with all the fierce challenges. Spawn on map allows you to spawn groups or places and attach events to them. Adventure end is how you finish events, give experience points and so on. And purchase drop and deal damage are advanced options that we'll cover in another video. So these are your basic building blocks that will build your adventures. So we choose the adventure phase first and this is where you'll enter your descriptions and your prerequisites and if you grab it and move it around holding the left mouse button as you can see the screen will move as well. And then you connect it with this little string. So you have to make connections between all the faces, remember that. And this is where you enter the text. So our village is visited by a demon. So as you can see, we've got the enter logic editor, add new output. We can change images. But what we'll do first is we're um, going to look at the logic editor. So this is where you will set your prerequisites for any event to appear. Or any phase, in fact, not just the whole event. But when it's in the first phase, it's for the whole event. So we've got the event entry filtering and event modification. Event entry filtering is where you do the prerequisites. And the modification is where you do the consequences or actions of this particular event phase. So for, for this event, we're going to set a couple of prerequisites. The first one is going to be some villagers present in the village. So in the filter source, we have a menu and we can search for tags in many places. So we can search anywhere on the map. We can set a chance for the event. So we will have like 5% chance to appear. We can search within a group, but we can only do that with group expeditions. Um, and we can look for player tags, but that's an advanced option that we'll look at in another video. And we can look at terrain location, that's again for expedition events. So you could have mountains, hills and so on. And the last one is the village. So for a village event we want to be looking for tags within the village. So we select the village. And then we press the little plus there. And what we want to select is objects that are actual people, our villagers. And all of our people 
uh, need to have the tag character in order to be classified as people. So again, you could look for someone, something that doesn't have a particular tag or does have a particular tag. We want them to have the tag character on them. So if you know what tag you're looking for, you're just going to type it in this little window here. Um, and obviously, the more you do, the more you're going to know these tags and it'll become quicker. And then you set the value, which is 1. Uh, but you can also shift and left click on this little arrow. And that actually shows you all the selection of tags that we have. And on the right, if you untick these groups, you can just leave the one that you will be looking for. Uh, the search by name doesn't work at the moment, so you can only search manually. So I see we just select the character type and then we have all the character tags in game. So it could be sickness, it could be a skill, it could be a curse. If you, we have these events that can remove curses, so you could be searching for, for people that have a curse and then an event can only appear if you have it on you. Um, the tag options unfortunately don't work at the moment as well. Uh, so what we did is we assigned the tag quest test 1 to 20 for your use. So do not use any other quest tags than tag quest test 1 to 20. If you start using any of the other quest tags, uh, like we've got uh, here the tag quest elf recruit or whatever, uh, you're actually likely to destroy the events in game and that can actually mess up your whole game so please don't do that anyway for our purpose we we are looking for people that have the tag character so we press the plus in results we look for the group we've just created and we want a list equal or bigger or the size equal or bigger and we select two so there need to be at least two objects with the tag character present in the village in order for this event to appear. So another one we're going to do is children. So again, we type in child, we give it the value, and this time we're looking for the children group, and we want it to be at least one child. So there need to be two villagers and one child present in the village for, in order for it to appear. And actually what we're going to do now is we are going to use a player tag that is relatively simple. And that's the night and day tag. So we're going to choose day. And this one doesn't need anything in the results. So the player tags don't need anything in the results. So basically... Um, now the event can only appear with two villagers, one child, and during the day turn. So, um, we are going to move to the event modification now. And in this event there's going to be a chance of a child being taken as a result of the demon's visit. So I'm going to create a group that is one child. As you can see, we have a, a couple of options there. Uh, we could be um, searching in first group, but not in a second, but we'll come to that in, a, in another part of the tutorial. Um, and we're interested in, in the leave options. So we're going to leave random X elements for the child because children don't have levels. If these were characters, then if we chose bottom or top, the computer would be searching for the bottom or top level. So we're choosing from the children group, so that we're searching for one random child from the group of children that we created previously. We set the number to one, and now this group will find this one random child for me. And then we go to the results, as you can see the results have many options. This is where you give rewards, make modifications, you can give blessings, you can increase squeeze kills give characters, give items, resources, and so on. Um, and we will be going through these options as we come along with the tutorial. For this, 
however I want to forward the list to the next phase and I'm forwarding the one child list. This means that I will be able to use this group in other phases of this event and I'm going to do the same for the villagers. Okay, so that's our basic prerequisites done for our first phase. Now I'm going to add an additional output, so I want there to be two ways in which this event can go. And you can add as many as you like and you can delete them as you see. Right, so we're going to just wait and see what happens with the demon. We're going to be quite passive about this and see how it turns out. And they're go both going to be the same answers. But they're going to um, have different outcomes. So it's going to be a short event, so I'm not going to put any extra text. I'm just going to put in an adventure end. And then enter the logic editor once again. So this one is going to have a chance of appearing. So we put in 30 there, so it means there's a 30% chance of that particular phase appearing. And as I said, we are actually going to remove the one child. So there's a 30% chance that if you wait and see what happens, the demon actually takes the child. You can award some experience points and research points as well. Now what we can also do is we can actually copy this whole phase or any phase by pressing F5 and then by pressing F6 we clone it. So that can be a useful little trick to save time when you want to just uh, have a fairly similar phase. So we've cloned it but uh, we don't want this one to have any chance so this one won't have any prerequisites. And instead of removing a child, this one is going to modify a group. And it's going to modify our villagers. So this is where you add rewards like blessings. So I type in bless. Uh, give them a bless of health for 10 turns. And additionally, we are going to um, add and remember to change the group where to village so we're going to add some items and let's say this little demon will give us some grain again it helps if you already know the, our resources but um, I guess you'll just die uh, then as you do more and more of those so now we have the two options. So the one with the prerequisite has a 30% chance of appearing. And if it doesn't appear, then obviously it goes straight to the second one. But we don't want both of them to be available at the same time. So we drop down the menu on the right and we choose the same value for both answers. So this means only one of those can appear at any time. Now a very important thing is, if you have any prerequisites, that phase needs to be at the top of the choices because the computer checks from top to bottom. So it will first check if the 30% chance happens or not. If it does, then this first option will appear. If it doesn't, it moves down to the next option and so on and so on. So I'll always put the ones with the green string on top. And yeah, the string changes to green when there's prerequisites. Uh, so yeah, that's it. You've got your basic village event done. Thank you.